You're an idiot if you don't buy a home. You heard me. Now look, I get it. For some people, it might make sense to rent. But for 99% of the people out there, it makes more sense to buy a home. So let's take a look at the real estate versus stock market return on investment for the period of 2000 and 2019. Historically, over a long run, I can pretty much guarantee it that owning a home will be better. Plus, a home has this one distinct advantage. You can't live in stock certificates. You can live in the home that you buy and invest in. So let's take a look at the last 20 years of stock returns. <laughs> up and down, look at those swings. Up, down, up, down. I mean, keep your therapist's phone number on speed dial. So the average return from 2000 to 2019 is 7.68% for the S&P 500. That's not bad. If you took $50,000 and invested it in 2000, it would be worth about 162,000 at the end of 2019. Again, not bad, really respectable. And if you own your home, I think everybody can agree it makes sense to diversify and have an investment in your home as well as some in the stock market. But that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about the people that says it makes more financial sense to invest in the stock market than buy a house. You're full of it. You don't know what you're talking about for the majority of the population out there. So let's take a look at home price appreciation over the same time period. Now let's take a look at real estate. In 2000 and 2020, median price appreciation was 3.85% throughout the entire US. Keep in mind, real estate is local and it's gonna vary from market to market. As an example, in Boston, we actually saw a 10.5% increase from the same time period where we saw average sale prices climb from 222,000 in 2000 to 690,000 at the end of 2019. Some markets, they may have even gone down. Real estate is local. That's the important thing to remember. So let's just stick to this 3.85% average uh, median price appreci appreciation just to show how investing in the stock market over real estate when you're talking about your primary residence is quite frankly dumb. Now look, a home appreciates off of the full asset value. It doesn't matter how much you put down. This is one of the major differences between the stocks and the real estate investment. Stocks, you actually have to pay for the entire position up front. Real estate, you can actually leverage. So what this means is that the ROI is going to change from person to person based off of their down payment. Quite frankly, the more you put down, the lower your return is going to be. So let's take that same $50,000 and invest it in real estate this time. The average down payment in 2019 was 12%. To make my life easy, let's just call it 10%. So you, let's use this $50,000 for a 10% down payment on a $500,000 house and see the return that we're going to get on our hard-earned money. At 3.85% for the average median price appreciation per year, that $500,000 house is going to turn into a $1,036,000 house. That's a $536,000 return. Same 50 grand over the same 20 years. But here's the best part, and quite frankly, the how. Yes, the house was appreciating over the same exact time period, but the house was appreciating off the purchase price of 500,000, not the down payment of 50 grand. This means the return off of the same $50,000 is 1,072% or an average of 53% per year. You heard that right. Over 20 years, that is a 10 times return on their investment, nearly 11 times return on their investment for a 1,072% return. And there is more, but let's just really quickly do a quick recap. Over the same 20 years, you could take $50,000, put it in the stock market, and turn it into $162,000 for a net gain of $112,000. Or you could buy a house and turn it into a $536,000 gain for a net gain of $486,000. So $112,000 or $486,000. Which one are you going to take? It's true. Over 20 years, you're going to pay a mortgage payment, and you're going to have to pay interest on that loan. But unless the stock market guy is sleeping on his parents' couch somewhere in the basement, they too are going to have housing costs. But let's dig into this mortgage issue a little bit. Average interest rate for that 20-year period on a 30-year fixed product was 5.21%. Now, compared to today's rates, that's really high. Most likely, at some point in that time, a seller or, excuse me, a homeowner would have refinanced. But let's use it anyway. So 
At 5.21%, with a principal balance of $450,000, that gives us a loan payment of $2,474. Now, it's important to remember that that $2,474, it's locked in. It will never increase, unlike rent, which actually increases with the market appreciation. So our mortgage payment, $2,474. Let's just say rent on a similar type property is $2,200 and that it never appreciates over the next 20 years, which is not real world. But again, we're just trying to give that renter the benefit of the doubt. So on the surface, if we're comparing the mortgage payment to the rental payment, the buyer who bought the house is actually quote unquote losing $3,288 a year. But are they really losing that? Let's take a look at the numbers and really find out. Did you know interest and property taxes are tax deductible? And with the mortgage, we actually pay more interest towards the beginning of the loan than we do towards the end. But to stay true to the stock guy's ray of hope of being the better investment, let's use the average interest paid over the 20 years, which is $18,734. This is where most renters will go, see, I told you so, we're better. But as I mentioned earlier, interest is tax deductible. So let's take a look at what writing off interest as well as property taxes will actually do. And just stick with me here, there's a lot of numbers, but I promise you it's well worth it. So for property taxes, let's assume $10 per thousand. So for a $500,000 property, that's $5,000 per year in property taxes. Now that would mean that the total write-off for that homeowner is now $23,734. So if we're an $80,000 earner and we are renting a property at a 22% tax bracket, that means we're paying the federal government $17,600. Now, if we're a homeowner making $80,000 and writing off our interest as well as our property taxes, that means our tax basis is going to be $56,266. At that same 22% tax bracket, that means we're paying the federal government $12,378 in federal taxes. Pretty significant savings, and this doesn't even include state taxes. There we have it. Found $5,000 in tax savings. I guess even paying lower rent still doesn't even help the stock guy. Homeowners, they just put another victory trophy on their shelf, which is a shelf that they own, by the way. Plus, it's important to mention that after 20 years, that homeowner will have paid down $219,000 in principal. This makes for an equity position of $805,000 in their house, all off of a $50,000 investment. So to recap, what's better? A $112,000 return for stocks or a $486,000 return with added security, stability, and tax benefits on that same $50,000. In this analysis, I give every advantage I can to the renter and stock market investor. All that being said, in the end, the homeowner comes out as the far and away winner and champion of the investment world. And I got this $1,000 here, and it's because once we hit 1,000 subscribers, I'm gonna give this $1,000 to the ASPCA. So let's save some dogs and some cats together. Drop a hammer on that subscribe button below. I'm Jeff Chubb. My team, the Chubb Homes team, were brokered by eXp Realty. Should you need us, you can get us at 617-480-2600 or online at boston2.com. Thanks for watching, and we look forward to hearing from you.